In this video, we're going to talk about shipper challenges for 2024 thus far and heading into 2025, much of the same. Of course, for the past 365 days, including 2023, we've seen that shippers have kind of been sighing together, a sigh of relief collectively because of the fact that after the, the pandemic disruptions that they had with the high, high prices of shipping for both ground, air, and respectively ocean, there has been a sigh of relief for the fact that now it's more sustainable pricing for them moving forward. But they still have challenges. They still have things they have to take care of, things they have to consider moving forward. And recently, the 3PL market report did come out stating a lot of different things that are very important, I think, for uh, trucking companies and respectively owner operators for trucking companies uh, or owner operators of their own company and also freight brokers, 3PLs alike as well, to really consider this data, to consider how they're going to go and try to sell their services to customers, uh, large, medium and small, respectively. First off, when we look at the top challenges for shippers, the number one thing that they had problems with uh, was um, something that we would all consider that that would probably be the case, and that would be cutting transport costs, right? Because they saw 2020, 2021, the latter stages of 2020, all of 2021, essentially, and bits and pieces of 2022, where rates were insane. I mean, absolutely insane when it comes to uh, pricing of shipments by ground, by rail, by whatever. You barge, barge shipping even went up as an example. Okay, so of course, there are shipping challenges. One of the things they're trying to look at and to cut through is the transport costs themselves. Another thing they're looking at is just on a business perspective, the business process improvement. Okay, they're trying to see how they can improve things that are pertaining their actual improvement of their business as a whole. So things like improving customer service, uh, supply chain visibility, these two points, right? A mix of those two are probably what shippers are looking at when they mention business practice improvement as something they really want to hone in on uh, moving forward for the rest of this year and of course 2025 as well. But improving customer service should be a category all in, in, in and of itself. And this could be things like on-time pickups, on-time uh, deliveries to their customers. This is challenges that every shipper has faced uh, for, for 2024 and moving forward as well. And in addition to this, they've said that they're looking to reduce labor costs. They're looking to, uh, they're having problems with finding, training, retaining qualified labor as well. And uh, they're looking to expand to new markets via source, new sourcing methods as well, uh, as an example. In addition to this, they're looking to manage the risk associated with shipping, uh, with looking at contingency planning. So this is something that you as a trucking company can take into consideration when you go and sell your services. Likewise, as a freight broker, the same is true as well. You can go into a shipper and talk to them about how you can improve the risk management or the contingency planning for delayed pickups or issues that arise during transit even of shipments and how you are different from the pack. So how you go about it compared to your uh, competitors, uh, for lack of a better term as well. Okay. And uh, s some are also looking at expanding to new markets via selling. Others are looking for uh, the distribution center uh, network to be optimized as much as they possibly can. So these are some things that shippers are dealing with that they're having problems with. But we, we also did see that in this report, they talked about shippers that openly said what the main reason was for letting go of a freight broker or letting go of, an, of a logistics partner, a trucking company, things that they really had problems with uh, moving forward. So 36% of shippers in the in the survey itself stated that it was definitely poor customer service overall. So this would be things like communication. Um, that was a deal breaker. That was a top deal breaker why that relationship failed. Okay. Another one is failed expectations as well. Whether it's from the KPI side where they're actually measuring these things right 95% on time for 
pickup for delivery or other uh, other uh, uh, KPI measurements that are important to the shipper. This is 29% of the shipper uh, pool that had stated that this was one of the reasons or one of the top reasons there was a failure uh, to continue a relationship with a freight broker or a trucking company as, a, as well. And 21%, imagine only 21%, stated that definitely a cost was was the biggest issue uh, in the in the equation. Another one is um, they had more competitive options from other freight brokers or other trucking companies that were trying to get their business. So they ended up cutting ties with the, th the other freight broker or trucking company that uh, that they were initially using uh, as an example. Uh, another one is cultural dissimilarities, but that's a very small piece, like 2% of the survey stated this. Another, another one is loss of control as well, loss of control of their business because of poor uh, business decision making by the trucking company or the freight broker that was being given the opportunity to run their freight as well. Okay. The overall question for shippers was, is price or service more important for them specifically? And 74% said service is more important, respectively to 26% saying price is more important than the other. Now, the people that are saying price or the shippers that are saying price, most likely it's, it's budget restraints and it's uh, constraints, whatever you want to call it. And in addition to that, it's probably also the commodity itself that they're moving. It's probably a cheap commodity that they're looking to get the best possible deal on to ship this from point A to point B as well. And uh, so, so th consider that as a trucking company. Consider that as a freight brokerage, as an idea moving forward as to how you're going to sell yourself or your services respectively to your customers in that in that manner as well okay so i mean this is just uh this is just how it is in in the world of uh, freight moves as well now in terms of what shippers or what kind of services shippers are buying if you want to categorize it uh 82 percent of course are buying the motor freight kind of deal okay so motor freight transportation over the road transportation of shipments 82%, and that's actually up uh, from 67% in 2023. So shippers are still buying. They're still buying the services of OTR from 3PLs, uh, from 4PLs even, respectively, um, trucking companies and so on, and so freight brokerages, okay? 74% of the pool of shippers surveys said they, they are buying expedited and small package deliveries as well. 72% are saying they are buying logistics technology, TMS technology, transportation management system technology, and warehouse management system technologies as well, okay? Another one is third-party logistics solutions. 69% are buying from 3PL solutions, okay? Or solutions that you may have as a 3PL to sell uh, to them. 64% are buying warehousing space or services, 54% are buying air freight or air charter expedited freight. 44% of the shipper surveyed, surveyed are buying international or intermodal ocean shipments as well. Okay, And likewise, respectfully, 44% are buying rail intermodal services as well. 40% are buying global shipping and freight forwarding solutions. 38% are buying port, site, or facility selection. 35% are buying materials handling equipment and solutions. Fleet operations are at 30%. Dedicated contract carriers, they're buying 30%. So 30% of shippers that were so surveyed are still buying dedicated contract carriers for their business. And 16% respectively are buying transportation equipment itself. Okay. And uh, w another thing that was asked in the survey is should shippers partner with one or more third party logistics company? Okay. Uh, or do they do they have an affinity to do as such? And 28% said they, they like the, the preference of having something to fall back on in case something goes wrong with the 3PL that they're under contract with, for example. I don't, uh, I think that number is quite frankly low. That's my own personal opinion. I think that number should at least be double, at least double, 
you you should definitely have a backup plan in case the selected 3PL doesn't come through with whatever the, the situation is, okay? And 33% that were surveyed says they only want one 3PL partner, okay? It, it's, it's to forge a partnership, a relationship with one single 3PL. That's the overall goal. That's where we all want to get to. We want shippers to do the same thing, hopefully, Okay, but that only can come down to you as a trucking company or you as a freight brokerage or a 3PL as a whole if you have more, more services than just freight brokering. If you're doing things the right way, if your communication is on par, if you're honest, if you're integral, if you're ethical, uh, ethical in your business practices, then yes, yeah, 100%, it should be a one in one thing. But if you're lapsing in, 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 in your coverage, if you're lapsing in your network, if you're lapsing in your communication, these are reasons for a shipper to go buy somewhere else, to not look at you as a potential service provider, okay? In addition to this, uh, when you want to transport or when shippers want to transport goods by truck, uh, most freight brokers can help. Most 3PLs can definitely help. 94% of 3PLs offer truckload services, Okay, 94% of all the 3PLs offer truckload, ground transportation. 91% offer LTL. 78% offer intermodal rail services. 71% offer dedicated contract carriage, where they have a network of contract carriers who are looking for that you know, high volume dedicated freight uh, that they can assist as the middle person in that equation. Okay, 62% are... are, are uh, uh, able freight brokers that is able to offer you final miles solutions 57 percent bulk just planting seeds in your mind right i mean bulk 57 percent only only 57 percent so there is a niche that you can consider as a freight broker okay 55 percent air cargo 53 percent ocean of course, there's some licensing certification things needed for that as well in order to book uh, ship space, essentially cargo space on air airplanes and, and ships as well. Small package parcel deliveries, only 53% of 3PLs offer this service. Only 51% offer white glove. Okay, so this is just some examples for you to consider as a 3PL or as a brokerage or even as a trucking company, certain things, if you are able to do it, you can see where there are things that are shippers shippers are looking for, but there's just not enough people selling uh, in that resp respect as well. Okay. When it comes to warehousing, warehousing also is something that, shipper, uh, that shippers will buy. As a broker, you should consider adding to your services cross-docking solutions. You should consider transloading solutions. Um, you, can, you should consider pick-and-pack or sub-assembly solutions for your customers, for your shippers, uh, fulfillment, distribution center management, vendor management uh, inventory as well, uh, e-commerce, site selection as well. These are things that, as a 3PL, you can definitely add to your tools of services that you provide for your customers. And also a take-home message for you. There was a question asked to shippers during the last measurement from last year. So since that period, did the shipper's customer base grow or shrink? And by how much? 38% of the shippers surveyed and this is, we're talking hundreds of shippers. This isn't three shippers. 38% said that up 5% in terms of cu customer base. So there is opportunity for you to go and sell your services. Yes, the economy seems to have retracted. This is correct. This is not a surprise to anybody. There are glimpses of hope. There are things that are happening that are slowly but surely turning into where we all would like this industry to go again, okay? Now, not we're not going to go back to COVID times of 2021 and 2020 and early stages of 2022 where things were insane, like where shipments were moving for $45,000 on 700 miles. That's not, that's not what we're saying. We're saying for it to stabilize where we have enough carriers to support the population and for the volume of freight moving, to get to that point and for the prices to be fair. So for both things to happen. 
shippers, 38% of them are up by 5%, and 19% are up by 10%, okay? 11% are up by 20%. 11% of shippers are up by 20%, okay? And in terms of o how many were down by 5%, only 5% said they're down in terms of the customer base, and down by 10% or more, 4% stated that they were down by 10% or more. Okay, just to give you uh, a, a glimpse of how the shipper side of the equation is working as well. Okay, so take these things into consideration as you're considering what you're going to do for this upcoming 2025 and for the remainder of this year as well. We still got a plenty of time to focus on this year as well. But these are some things that are happening right now. This is how shippers are feeling so far about 2024 and things that they value and things that they don't value, okay? So there is plenty of room for you to grow as a broker, a trucking company, or an owner-operator as an example, okay? Thank you very much for listening. If you enjoy this content uh, the way it is, please give it a thumbs up, comment, let me know what you what your thoughts are, and tell me what you're seeing out on the roads as well. Not so much about myself, you specifically as a participant in this industry, how you're feeling and what your thoughts are about this industry. And please share this video uh, with your network across all social media platforms. Thank you very much, and I appreciate it. Thanks for sticking to the end if you did. Thank you.